attention, please? I'm going to ask you just one time to break this up and go about your business. We're not putting on an entertainment here. Oh, I'll bring Bristol Toby out, Sheriff. Sure. Let's have a look at the killer. Fanny Williams, now look here. This man is not a killer until he's been convicted, and this trial has only started. Judge and jury gone to lunch. Come on, fetch him out. We'll help you walk him to jail. <laughs> Give them wings, Sheriff, and they'll make a fine bunch of vultures, won't they? And if we'd take you to jail, we'd just be leading a parade. Gibson, better put him in the cell in the basement. I'll have some food sent in. Here you are, Mr. Cartwright. Volume one, Yankee Meadows. Thank you, Kelly. It's just what I need. This courthouse is built over the Golconda mine. I sure hope they don't intend to do much blasting below us. I thought they weren't supposed to blast near the surface. Well, they're not. Well, it's just a bigger one than usual. Well, thank you, Kelly. I'm glad that's over. Yeah. Kelly! Happy birthday, darling. And a surprise. A picnic basket prepared by the chef of Nevada Club, chicken and wine. And I've, uh, I've made a special reservation for the Willow Grove, back of the opera house. Oh, I'm delighted. But I thought you had to be on the witness stand. I was, but I've been dismissed. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, Jonathan Pike, my fiancé. Yes, of course. We've met before. Yes, we have. How are you? Well, I'm not at my best. It's not very pleasant to sit there knowing that your testimony is going to put a rope around a man's neck, even though it's richly deserved. Well, it's nice to see you again. Johnny, Bristol Toby did kill Mr. Wilderson. Yes, I know, but it's... It's all over now, and I can think of better things to talk about. Mr. Cartwright, will you be all right? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Doing? Putting him in that cell there, sir. Come on, step lock, Liar! Mr. Kirkland, help me! Liar! They haven't held me yet! Liar! Johnny, did he hurt you? No, he didn't touch me. Thanks, Mr. Cartwright. Now, if you behave, I'll take those cuffs off so you can eat. Right there. 
is he dead? Lift this up, he's bad hurt. Come on now. Let me out and I'll give you a hand. You're not going to make it. I know what to do. Let me out. Oh, wait. Get him. Can let him out. You can't, Mr. Cartwright. He's a murderer. Mr. Cartwright! I'm not to make a mistake! I need something for the lever. You would have done it if you'd have been underground for ten years. All right. Peacock, put your weight on this. Come on. Put your weight on it. All right. Now. Push. Down. Get down. Now. Down. Push, Peacock. Push. Lift it. Push down. Okay, Sammy? Mrs. Connor, she was in the county clerk's office. But Doc Hill's going to take care of the injured in the saloon just up the street. I think that's a lot. Well, did you go into the basement? No. Well, I know that there's my deputy down there and his prisoner and the lady that's taking care of the records. And whoever else might be down there. Get down there and check, will you, please? Please stand back, folks, please. You can give me a hand, will you? Yeah, I'll be glad to give you a hand. Not you. You're not in good condition. All right? Walk her right around and we'll block this porch off. She's got a broken arm, Doc. Bring her right over here. How many more are trapped down in there? Oh, I don't know. I heard it cave in and just started running. Uh, easy. Uh, easy. Uh, Hoss. Uh, Hoss. Cut right. I gotta tell him. Tell him what? I gotta talk to him. <laughs> you better get Hoss caught right over here right away. Right, Doc. Get a blanket. That's out. He's something to put under his head. Oh, good. Good. Logan, you all tied off? No, Roy. Old mine shafts down there must be caving in. That whole floor seems like it's sinking, don't it, Bob? Bad. Bob, go see if you can find Arch Tremaine. You know, Galconda superintendent, and get him over here fast. He really understands about these cave ins, and we need all the expert help we can get. Right. Oh! Oh! Mrs. Connors wants to talk to you. It must be important. Doc said come right away. Fine, I'll tell you something you can do for me. Ride out and get Candy and little Joe for me, will you? Sure, Oss.
pooch, not your property. Keep your hands off it. Ain't the condemned man entitled to a hearty meal? Take it easy on it. We may need it later. We could be here a long time. They may never come. Eat up. Hey, Peacock. Why are you trying so hard to have me hung? I told the truth about you. And you're a liar. Now, shut up, both of you. If you say so. Is it getting hard to breathe in here? Or am I imagining it? A little. It'd help if we uh, turned out some of the lamps. It's a good idea. Let's put them all out. I'll accept that one. The one back there. Major cave ends in this stove here between the 100 200 foot level. It's almost directly under the courthouse. Main, what about the basement? There's four people down there. Well, there's bound to have been a lot of slippage in through here. Those vault walls may have held, they may not have. Any survivors down there, we won't know till we get down there, and that's going to take a while. Well, why are we after it? I mean, what are we doing just standing around here? Well, I know how you feel, Hoss. If my paw's down there, I'd be raising cane, too. Paw's down there. Paul and three others down there. Oh, aren't you over there getting them out? Well, we're going to, Joe. We've got to go about this careful. I'll tell you what I need. I need five or six good men to work with me in the courthouse. And the rest of you would be more help if you'd help stack that wreckage out in the street. Well, you got three right here. Well, fine. How about you, Charlie Rutledge? You bet. again, I might be able to use that Irish luck of yours. Yeah, and me, Barry Williams, ready for duty. Hogan, you'll do. All right, that ought to be enough for now. Let's get going. Well, so I'll tell him. I can, I can help. Not now, Benny. You're in no condition. No, no, but I never stick a stone in there. The air's bound to get a bit stale down here. Well, you'll have us out of here in no time. What if they don't realize we're alive? Then they'd have no reason to hurry, and it could take Dr. them Callie, days. They're not going to assume that we're dead. They'll get us out of here. Oh, well, we can't be sure. Okay, what? Okay, okay. Okay, darling, don't worry. What Mr. Cartwright says. Shh. Hey, darling, don't worry. They can't help but hear that. We'll be out of here in a few hours. If nothing stops that clock. Oh, 
boss. I just said you didn't work in there anymore. We don't know how strong that floor is. Right. Paul? Listen to me, Joe. Come away from that stairwell. We've got to clear this wreckage out of the center of the room. Otherwise, the whole thing's going to cave in and kill everybody down there. Now, listen to me, all of you. This wreckage here in the center of the room is dead weight hanging over that basement vault. Now, the support beams may already be gone, or it may just be holding by a hair's breadth. We cannot put any more weight on the center of this room. We've got to clear out this wreckage first, then we'll get to the stairwell. You all got that? What do we do now? Like I said, we clear out the center of the room first, then we get to the stairwell. Now hop to it, but walk like you're walking on eggs. beams under the section may be gone, so take it easy. Rest you men form a chain and get this wreckage out the street. Certainly timbering a fire in the mine. Better move the death. Give me that. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, leave the blanket. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Pull up, pull up. Miss Kelly, tear that blanket into strip. That's a good lass. It might even keep us off from choking to death on the smoke. Finish here. You'd make a better signal man than the one we've got, right? Things have come out even. <coughs> oh, it's so hard to breathe. Is he really that bad? It'd be easier if you breathe shallow. Don't try to move too much, all right? You fools, they must all be deaf. Joe Morrissey. Come on, let's get him out of here.
See if they know Morris. Come to be careful. Johnny, what's he saying? I don't know. Mr. Cartwright, can you make it out? My sailing days, I could make out the Morse code pretty good, but it's too fast for me now. They're asking how many of us are alive down here. county clerk showed up. He'd been over to Carson City. And as near as I can figure out, that leaves seven people still missing. We found five of them. They're alive in the vault. What about Paul? Well, four of them are all right. One of them's bad hurt. They didn't say which one. Sheriff, those people need air, and they need it bad. We've got to get that compressor over here from Gal Condon. Get the compressor and the pipe and some line in there. Since I can't work in the courthouse, that sounds like a good job for me if somebody would show me where it is. There's something else we need, Sheriff. We need some thin iron rod. We're going to have to punch a hole through that wreckage so we can get an airline down there to them. Blacksmith shop. That's the best place for that. Well, yeah. let's get going. Hey, Clint, Ross left the team and why can go with Hoss here. Mr. Cartwright, he's having trouble breathing. I don't know whether it's the air or, or if he's worse. Get, get, get one of those vets to put it out be an hour before they can start to pump any air. Tell them it's got to be sooner. We won't last. Air's not that bad. It's thick and it stinks, but I've worked in mines where it's been worse, Peacock. Don't call me Peacock. I'll call you anything I like. And I'll tell you something else. I'm going to make you admit you lied on the witness stand, even if I have to tell you Alan from Lynn. Do you understand me, Peacock? Don't call me that! I'm flat out. Both of you! Trial will be settled up in that courtroom, not down here. If we get out of it alive, it'll we'll be... get out of here alive. They're going to have to come down that stairway. They're going to have to clear the top of that. Come on. See if we can get clear away some of this stuff right here. They want to punch an air hole. They're asking if we're willing to risk it. Yes. Well, let's, let's get some cover right over there. All right, Joe, go ahead. Hey, come on, come on. Get some of that stuff out. Sledge. Joe! Tap her light. Joe, try her again.
Are you all right? I'm all right. Well, I'll tell you one thing for sure. We're never going to get an airline down through this mess. What do we do now? I don't know. That fluid may not be plugged up all the way. Seems to be the end of it. I hope so. It's not too bad. I've been in worse cavings. Johnny, he's not here. Uh, here I am. Are you all right? Yes. Where were you? Well, a piece of the ceiling fell down, knocked me in there. Mr. Cartwright told you to take cover in here. What were you doing in there? Uh, stop bickering, both of you, will you? Callie, take care of Gibson, will you? All right, let's clear the debris away. This is miners' work. You try and it'll all come down on your heads. Look, you two stack and I'll do the clearing, all right? All right. Careful. Careful. The compressor right over here in the wagon right next to it. Let's hurry up. We only got about a half hour of daylight left. Looks pretty good, Hoss. Yeah, how long it'll be before we can get some air down there to him? I don't know. I'd say at least 15, 20 minutes. alone because I'll bring it all down on top of us. I can move it. I heard you were a timbering man. I was shoring, boss. Best on the Comstock. Spent three years. that warned old Wilderson that the stopes under us here were going to cave in. You know what thanks I got? He fired me. For warning him? Or oh, pinch a penny, Wilderson? He didn't want to spend money on new timbers. And he didn't want me around reminding him that he had to put them in. <laughs> to hear the peacock tell it, I killed Wilderson for firing me. That's a lie, Mr. Cartwright. The truth is, I thanked Wilderson on the spot. I was tired of slaving in a mole hole and only seeing the sun one day a week. I wanted to go back to sea. I was a sailor like you. Aye. A man should be able to see the sun, Mr. Cartwright. Cartwright's the finest man I ever met. I, I've been thinking, what? How can I help you get him out? I know every sick and stone in the building. Look, the most help you can be, Manny, is go somewhere and sleep it off. No, 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 I mean it, Hoss. I know every stick and stone. Right. The other way.
what you've been telling me. As much as they'd let me. Look, I'm as ugly as a wagon load full of sin, and yet the peacock's as pretty as a $20 gold piece. Who would you believe? Jonathan! to kill me. You heard him. Put down the gun. Johnny, please, no! You haven't got the guts to kill a mouse. So you lied for the man that did. Now, who was it? Oh, I had to lie. Who's going to put me in jail? Did you hear that, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, I heard that. Let's shoot up that beam. Come on, push it. Come on, up. come on, Eddie. Boss, boss, I'm sober, boss. Look, 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 I've been, I've been soaking my head under the pulse, see? Yeah, yeah, well... Near it, anyhow. Listen, Tremaine won't listen to me, but you got to, boss. I helped build this building, every freaking board. And I helped build the coal chute through the alley wall into the basement. Oh. Penny, they ain't a coal chute in all of Virginia City. Oh, no, don't be so persnickety. A coal chute is a coal chute, even if it's firewood that you chuck down it for the stoves. And I'm telling you, we cut one through the alley wall. You didn't go into the basement. How come Paul ain't found it? I ain't sure. But I think they bricked it over when they put their records down there. Show me. office, Mr. Cartwright, little rotten timbers I was getting. Well, I wasn't the only one. Who forced you to steal? Tremaine. He was stealing, too. Wilderson caught him, so he killed Wilderson. And then he, he forced me to lie to put the blame on Toby. Kelly. You must understand. I... Please understand. No. And I realize, Jonathan, that I have never known you. Message for the sheriff. Yeah. Worst comes to the worst. I don't want murder on my tombstone.
hurry up, will you? Now, you just take it easy. Look, I'm not hurt that bad. Hurry up. I want to get back there. Not hurt that bad. One rib broken and two cracked. I don't suppose you'd listen to reason and not go back to work. That's right. I won't listen to reason. Just hurry up. All right. Go back if you have to, but you be almighty careful. I'll keep an eye on him, Doc. Come on, let's go. Wait just a minute, young fella. You're not going any place till I've had a chance to look at that knee. Well, that's a waste of time. It's not the matter with my knee. Well, Sit down. Let him look at it. There's nothing wrong with that. Come on, come on. Sit down. Come on. All right, all right. I'll be Thanks, right over. All right, Doc, hurry up. The leg's not hurt that bad. Well, let's just take a look. Besides, I was hoping maybe we could keep Joe here with you. Oh, come on, Doc. It didn't work, did it? Candy. You've seen that cave in over there. Yeah. Well, how much longer do you think they're going to be able to survive? We're pumping air in down there now. Are you sure it's getting to them? I just thought it might be a good idea if... somebody else found Joe's paw. <laughs> A few minutes. We you mean you walked off and left this thing out of water and let it blow itself up? All right, all right. How long will it take to fix it? I have the parts half the night. In the meantime, those people down there are going to run out of air and they'll be dead before we can get to them. Thanks to you, mister. Well, there's still a chance. There's a coal chute down to that basement. A coal chute in Virginia City? Huh? Well, I don't believe that. Well, I do. We're going to find it. Come on, Benny. Him how long he's gonna be, and I'm getting no answer. to set this place on fire. We found it. We found it. So we'll cover it up. Steve, but you can make it. Well, Kelly, come on, get up there. No, Gibson first. Well, get Gibson up there. Get up there quickly now. Tell him to send down a rope.
your rope? My rope, right there. Jonathan, you next. Get there. Come on, lad. Do as you're told. Come on. Now up you go. Scramble. Come on, Peacock. Scramble for your life. Up you go. There's a lad. Go on. You want to talk to me, Sheriff? I certainly do. Come on. All right, start pulling up, boss. Easy, fellas, easy. Take it easy. Easy, Adam, now. He's hurt. Don't hurt him. Pull so. You got him, Candy? Kelly. Well, I'll tell you, the whole world just fell apart when Crystal Toby got that confession out of Jonathan. But she was lucky at that. It's a whole lot better for a gal to find out about a man before she marries him than after. Yeah. Yeah, that ankle's really bothering you, isn't it? I don't even remember twisting it when I got out of that cold shoe. Who's that for? Just what the doctor ordered, hot water and Epsom salts. Well, the doctor may have ordered it, but I didn't. Yeah. No, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Paul, that's the only way to treat a sprained ankle. Hot Epsom salts water and no water. Wait, 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 wait. This ankle's not sprained, just twisted, that's all. Just twisted, not sprained. Sure. That's why Joe and I had to carry from the buggy, right? Well, you may have had to carry me, that's true, but it's just a twisted ankle. I don't know. Just because it's twisted doesn't mean I have to have it. Why don't we just take off the slipper and the sock and we'll take a look at it. It's not going to hurt anything. Come on, take it easy. Easy. I'm going to go as easy as I can. Easy. Something that isn't too bad, Pa. It sure is hurting. Easy. I'm doing it as easy as I can. Well, take a look at that. Just look at it. It looks pretty bad. It's pretty swollen. Now, the hot water isn't going to hurt it any. <clears throat> All right. Pull that pot right over here. Nice and easy. Well, that's, that's what the doctor said. Hot as you could stand it. I can't stand it. Well, it's gonna be fine. I don't know which is worse. The cure or the illness. I know it hurts, but it's better than being in a cave. At least you won't have to see that place anymore. What was that? Why was that? I was thinking about that. You know, I still need that book of records. That volume one, Yankee Meadows. Well, not right away, you're not. Not with this ankle. Well, that's that's what I was thinking. Since I'm not going to be able to walk for the next two or three days. Yeah, somebody ought to go in there and get it out of the debris. Yeah, sure glad you volunteered. <laughs> I really don't think the ankle's that bad. I mean, it's, it's not a sprain, it's a little twist in it. It's sprained. It's a sprain. It's 
it's, it's brass brain. Yeah, I figured it would be. One, two, doggone him. Hey. Hey, come on. Maybe you busted something. Oh, well, the heck with it. Come on, drag him out of here. What's wrong with you? Oh, I'm gonna have to take your word for that. <coughs> What's this all about? You're in jail. What for? What? What's going on? You be quiet. What am I doing in here? Don't you know? I haven't got any idea. You hear me. I've got a right to know what's going on. Right? I guess not. That goes for you too, Doc. Look, you can't just throw a man in jail for no reason. Let him rest a bit. I'll tell you frankly, I don't approve of any of this. Who's in charge? I want to talk to somebody! What's your name?
Good to see you're eating up with curiosity. So I'll tell you. Mine's candy. What's going on? My head hurts. Well, that gives us something else in common, friend, because so does mine. Mine hurts worse than yours. You can't be sure of that. Uh, there's, there's black spots in front of my eyes. So do I, when I stand up. Well, I got them lying down, and there's these little specks of light. Well, you got me beat. Uh, hey. You got my sympathies. You got anything to drink? No, partner. They picked me clean. Oh, that dang woman! Oh, blast her anyway! Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I suppose you'd give me some idea what's going on around here. Look, I told you my head aches. It'd be a help to me if you quit, quit hopping around in them nothing boots of yours. about you, friend, but I'm beginning not to like this at all. All right, get in. How long I'm going to be here? Keep quiet. Hey, huh? who's that? My name's Candy. Mine's bird. What the heck's going on here? I'm kind of hoping you could tell me. Oh, Lori, I... Hey, what'd you do? Oh, nothing serious. I swear it. Nobody's telling me nothing. Yeah, same here. What cell are you in? Second from the end. Where are you? I don't know. Hey, uh, stick your arm out. Can you see it? Wave it around. How about that? Get that arm back inside. All right, on your feet. Where are you taking me? Let's go. What are you guys going to do to me? Come on, move. Oh. Why did they have to put you 
in here. That's exactly what I'm trying to figure out, Pat. Well, would you just come over here for a minute? Well, come on. I want to know how one man can make so much noise. It's the boots. Mister, if you paid more than a dollar and a quarter for them boots, you got robbed. Oh, all that tromping around ain't helping my headache none. Oh, I plumb forgot. I'm sorry. Do you know what they're up to? Really bothers you, don't it? Yeah. Oh, I think I'll just let you fret on it for a while. That's very kind of you. I heard the whole thing, you know. I've been here since last night. Drunk? Some. <laughs> well, a man spends all week slaving to repair boots that ought to be thrown away. He needs a little fun. <laughs> uh, what I heard before they put you in here was purely awful. Awfulest thing I ever heard of. Yeah. What? And it's for me to know, and you'd find out. No, you don't know. Maybe I don't. Then again, maybe I do. Whatever makes you happy, friend. <laughs> All right, you're next. Come on! Are you in charge here? Ain't he the cool one, Mr. Burnham? If there's anything missing, I want to know who to hold to account. What's your name? Kennedy. People generally call me Candy. Where are you from? Near Virginia City. Wrong way. What are you doing in Stillwater? Business. Kinda. Which way'd you come in? From the south? No, from, uh... From over east to here. Virginia City's down south. Like, I don't know what you're fishing for. If you let me tell my story, maybe I can settle what's bothering you. Explain the money. I work for a man named Cartwright. Ben Cartwright? You know him, Mr. Burnham? I've heard of him. Well, Mr. Cartwright and his two sons and myself are taking a, a swing through here to look at breeding stock. A uh, day before yesterday, Mr. Cartwright sent me over to Big Fork to uh, collect some money owing him, a man named Sam Whalen. That's it, right there, $400. I left there yesterday afternoon to come on over here. I'm supposed to meet Mr. Cartwright at the hotel. What time did you get in today? Around noon. Came straight over from Big Fork. That's right. Where did you spend the night? It's about 20 miles out. It's a, it's a little spring. By yourself? Mm-hmm. You sure you didn't swing down around south here this morning? Dead sure, I came right straight in. Anybody back you up on this? I, I don't know. You talked to anybody? Yes, yes. There was a uh, one fella, an old man. When was this? About mid morning. The place was about uh, six, eight miles east of here. What was his name? Haynes, Baines, something like that. Praise be. Praise be. All right. <laughs> 
Let's just try to take it easy, Mr. Burns. What's going on? Oh, I, I think my prayers have been answered. It's starting to look that way. What's he talking about? That's what he's talking about right here. Well, money's money. Didn't tell me much. Where'd you get this? I told you. Tell me again. I collected it from Sam Whalen. It's owing to Mr. Cartwright. This Whalen, he knew you were coming for him? That's right. A funny way to do business, wouldn't you say? It seemed all right to me. This amount of money, men generally use a check, bank draft. That's what I was expecting. That's the way Sam wanted to do it. I don't like carrying that much cash around with me. Must have broke your heart. It was Saturday. There was no way to get a bank draft. I, I bought the money belt. There's no paper in any of this stuff to indicate such a deal? Why should there be? I gave Sam a receipt. He gave me the money. I don't need a paper. If you don't believe me, ask Sam Whalen. He's in big part. We got you here. Look, Mr. Cartwright can vouch for me. He's probably at the hotel right now. From what you say, he hasn't seen you for two days. He doesn't know what you've been up to. Who was with you? Nobody. That no point in line, boy. We know you were there. Where? Where? Look, I don't know what you want. If you just tell me what you're after, I know I can straighten it out. Well, that's the idea, son. I spent a lot of years questioning people. You never tell them how much you know. It makes it a little harder for them to trim their story. What'd you do with the rest of the money? I didn't have any other money. That's Steve's bunch. Partner guy? How many times do I have to tell you I don't have a partner? How do you explain the horse? One horse! Horse you left over the delivery stable. <laughs> oh, well, didn't think we knew about that, did you? Recognizing? No, well, am I supposed to? Where'd you find him? Going down that old wash. As soon as he saw us, he took off high tail. I mean, what's your name? I'm John Ferson. So I'm in back. Search him. Good. <clears throat> How you fellas doing, Louis? Well, looks right. like we hit Peter. You work for this Ben Cartwright? That's right. How come you to bring in a horse with a honeycomb brand? First thing this morning, my horse threw a shoe. I took it easy on him, but he, he pulled up lame, so I walked him over to this ranch. That's where I met the old man. I swapped him my horse and a buck fifty for one of his. A prudent man in a strange country would have got a bill of sale. Well, it didn't seem called for. The money was, was kind of a good faith thing anyway. If Mr. Cartwright had the time, I thought to go back in the morning and then get my own horse back. You can go ask the old man. No. Your boy up to taking a look at him. You'll have to be. I want this cleared up. I'll go over to the dock and get him. Can you, uh, can you please send somebody to the hotel to see if Mr. Cartwright's in yet? Uh-uh. He'll come looking for me. Now listen. We're not going to have any outside meddling right now. Could you see, I passed the word. Get him out of here. Mr. Cartwright. Hey, you got a bath? Yeah, we do. We're meeting another fellow here. Probably checked in earlier today. But... No, sir. A uh, young fellow named Candy. You're the first today. Must have made better time we figured. The rooms are right at the top of the stairs. Yeah, you could have been glad, I guess. 
Thank you. Man and boy, I have been making boots for 30 years. I am the best boot maker this side of the Mississippi. Lonnie Stern is my name. You've uh, probably heard of me. No, no. Can't say that I have. Well, everybody'd know me if folks around here bought my new boots instead of wearing their old ones until they split and they pull them on and they go all the way up their knees. It's enough to make a body reach for a bottle. Hey, you sure you ain't got one stashed on you? No, no, I can't help you. Well, I told you my name. Oh, what'd you say yours was? Hmm? Oh, candy, candy. That ain't no name for a man. I don't know. It taught me how to fight. <laughs> you take my name, Lonnie. You won't find that on no horse or no lap dog or... Woman, you don't have to enlarge on it. You had to mention it, didn't you? Mention what? Woman. Makes me think of my wife, and she's the one who put me here. You know, uh, last night, I got home, and we had some words about me drinking, and I had to cuff her a couple of times, you know, just... <laughs> well, she carried on something fierce, but there wasn't no need. <laughs> Women can be difficult. You, are you married? <laughs> no, no. Well, don't make out that you know something about it, because you don't. <laughs> She never done nothing like that before. Well, heck, this time when I... Well, she hardly even lost her balance. Hey, would you settle down? You're making me uneasy. All right, I will, if you'll tell me what's going on here. Well, you mean why they're putting people in jail and all? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. All right, all right, now just sit right down. And then I will tell you. been going on for a couple, three hours, you know. Yeah. Tromping around and yelling and riding off. Why? Confound it, why, why? What started it? I was just funning you before. I don't know. There's nothing like a good laugh to brighten the day. Exactly. On your feet. Peter, you take a good look at him. I don't know. Sure. The boy ought to hear him say something. Yeah. What's your name? Burn Crandall. I want you to say this. Go fetch that Jimmy John of coal oil. Well, what for? Just repeat it. I want you to go on and fetch that Jimmy John of coal oil. Do you recognize the voice, son? Have you seen this man before? I think so. Maybe. I don't know, Pa. Take him out to the office and we'll go over him again. What about this one? Yeah, I think so. Peter, are you sure? Now, son, son, I'll just hold on a little longer. Then you can go back and lie down. Hmm? All right, son. Is this the man you saw today? Yeah. This is very important, Pete. We can't afford to have a mistake. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Take the boy with you. Take the boy with you. Hey, Pa! 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 I'm sorry. All right, let's just 
leave him alone for a bit. Don't worry, Mr. Burnham. We got friends. We'll be taken care of. Don't worry. I promise. Word for it, can't you? Turn it loose. There's no candy. You won't find it. This person to register was ten days ago. Looks like this page has been torn out. Why? <laughs> Fella spilled ink on it. I never heard of him. Hey. I'm sorry. I tried funning with you. You know, I'm teasing you. It's all right. It's all right. Now, would you tell me what you done? Nothing. Do you know a man named Baines or Haynes? Old man. Oh. Old man Haynes. Uh, he's Burnham's father-in-law. Helps run Burnham's ranch. And that was Burnham's ranch I was on this morning. I, I, uh, I swapped a horse with, uh, with old man Haynes about 10 o'clock. But the boy pointed you out. Yeah, he must have seen me while I was there. I don't know. That, that poor boy, he, he doesn't know what he's saying. All right, All right. Uh, come on. Uh, was it something dreadful? I, I won't tell him. Will you let it drop? Will you let it drop? All right, all right. Never seen such a mean-spirited man. I'll be glad to get away from you. Hey, they're gonna let you out of here pretty soon. I expect so. Sheriff knows that I'm easy to get along with when I'm sober. Look, when you get out, I want you to go to the hotel. I want you to find a man named Ben Cartwright. I want you to tell him where I am. Why should I? He'll give you some money. Oh. Too much harm. What I'd done. Done what? Saying I saw you up on Burns' place with another fella this morning. But you didn't. I was alone. I had to. I shot one of Burns' calves for meat, for pot meat. That's ten years. Yeah. They said they just forget it if I help them. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Vern, sure. An uncommon name like that. If I'd have heard it, it'd have stuck. No? No, he ain't been here. I just don't understand it. Well, he's just the three horses in today, the ones he brought. Is there any other stable in town? No. Well, that's the one and only. Hey, whose horse is this? It ain't got your stable to brand on. Well, oh, that's Mr. Burnham's honeycomb brand. He's a regular customer. Oh, when I said uh, only the three horses come in, I meant uh, horses I didn't know. Ah! Candy saddle. You're mistaken, mister. That's mine. Take a left stirrup, see the neck? Yeah. Candy, there ain't no question about it. Like a lot of saddles have nicks all over them. It's a strange place to keep a saddle down there. Look, I'll keep it anywhere I want to. Now, um, I'm closing up. Take it. 
Did you hear that? Hear what? The voices. I didn't hear nothing. I'm sobered up. Now, this page to our hotel register, that's the one your friend wrote his name on, huh? Well, we think so, yes. And his saddle was found in the livery stable, hidden under some straw in a box stall. His? Yes. How do you know that? Was it got his name on it someplace? No, it doesn't have his name on it, but there was a nick in the stirrup leather which we all recognized. Well, all right. Let's have his description now. Uh, how tall? <laughs> You think you'll get out before dark? I generally do. You be sure you go straight to Mr. Cartwright now. Uh -huh. Tell him I said to give you twenty dollars. That much, huh? Can you remember the name? Oh, sure, sure. You better tell me yours again. See this candy fella around any place while well, I tell him you're over at the hotel. Well, that's all you're going to do? Well, that's all I can do. Well, you can talk to the hotel clerk. Well, you've already done that. You didn't find out anything. Well, talk to the fellow at the livery stable. Now, we know that's candy saddle. I'm not going to arrest a man for tearing a page out of his own book. But that saddle is probably a hundred of them around. Got nicks in them one place or another. Your friend is probably going to show up any minute now and wonder why you fellas are making such a fuss about him. Oh, don't worry, fellas. He'll show up. He'll show up. I appreciate that, Harry. I don't want interference any more than you do. Why don't we get this uh, candy back in here and really bear down on him? Yep. Yeah, may as well let Lonnie out, too. We ought to be sober by now. Nobody leaving admit seeing him. He's got to be around here someplace. Yeah, page tour out of the hotel registry. Saddle hidden over there in the livery stable. Well, he didn't ride out of town bareback either. I know of a lot of places we haven't looked. Come on. <laughs> everything I'm going to say. Well, the survivors identified you, boy. We got a witness back there that saw you and your partner within two miles of Mr. Burnham's place just a few minutes after the... Killings. Go ahead and use the word. It would be a lot better for you if he was to tell us the whole story. Where's the money? Who's your partner? I can't help you. I think I ought to tell you, son, Mr. Burnham here has got his heart set on a confession. I don't have a lot of faith in courts, mister. But you are not going into one without a confession. Signed, sealed, and delivered. I'm not going to say another word until I see Mr. Cartwright. Open up! Open you up!
you? No. Where's Joe? He's at the freight yards out on the edge of town. I've been down every street and alley in this town, talked to everybody I could meet. There ain't many out, but nothing. Yeah, same with me. Well, Candy's in trouble. Wherever he is, we're gonna have to find him. Hold it. Let's put him in here. Easier to feed him. They worked you over pretty good. Uh, yeah. Have they gone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Putting on an act for them, huh? A little. They get rough enough, they can make a man talk himself blue in the face. You say anything? Just out every now and then. <laughs> My name is John Ferson. My name's Candy. None of them knows what he's doing. Temporary deputies. Ah, that's about what I figured. Nobody will tell me why. A couple of fellas robbed Burnham's ranch this morning. Killed his wife and her father. Then burned the place down around them. No wonder they're so stirred up. How come you know about it? One of the fellas picked me up this morning, told me. Oh. I uh, kind of got the idea that that sheriff was a bear on everybody being closed mouthed. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess he didn't uh, get to everybody. Yeah, I guess not. Nothing? No. Well, I guess we'll wait until morning. Let's go in. you over again. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Don't have to be. They missed it when they searched me. I figured I'd jump them when they bring some food around. I could use some help. If you're game. Candy locked up in jail right here. All right. And he's going to stay locked up. On what charge? Robbery, arson, and two murders. Oh, that's a pack of nonsense. What's this all about? Doesn't concern you. Oh, yes, it does concern us. Candy works for us. And we want to talk to him. Not while I'm still investigating, mister. And when that's done, he can talk to anybody he wants to, not before. What about bail? Judge is riding in on Monday. You can see him about bail. Be a waste, though. He's not going to set bail, not for murder. Look, Candy has a right... That's right. You may carry a lot of weight back home, but around here, you're just another loud noise. I'm busy. You hamper me in any way, I'm liable to toss you in jail. Is there any lawyer in this town? Yeah, Ed Phipps. But if you're gonna catch him sober, you better hurry. He starts drinking around noon. <laughs> Wait a minute. That knife in your 
boot, Mr. Bush, very convenient, and I'm very suspicious. You're going first. Hey, hold up. Oh, hold on a minute, huh? Jim? Jim? Jim, it's me, Johnny! Jim, it's me, Johnny! one of your killers. This is the other one. He's ready to talk. Everything's there. It's all cleared up now. Jim's owned up to it, where he hid money, everything. I, I've known Jim Hale half my life. I, I trusted him. Well, turned out all right. The right men in jail, nobody hurt. So, uh, I guess you fellas be heading on back down south. Yeah. Yes, just as soon as you've given him everything you own. Excuse me? An apology. Oh, well, sh of, of course. That goes without saying. I'm real sorry, son. All right. Well, boy, I, you can understand how it is. I'll try. But don't you count on it. The law presumes a man to be innocent until proven guilty. 
Had you gone along with that, you wouldn't have to apologize. is guilty. He shot and killed an unarmed man. That jury acquitted him. But I didn't. And I'm not about to. Hey, John. John! Not guilty! Not guilty! I say he's not guilty! Jerry's turned to duty! Not guilty! Ryder's not guilty! Hey, John. Where are you going? Hey, Mr. Deegan, why not? He's going to get himself a gun. I'll bet you. I'll bet you. There's going to be a lot of people unhappy about that verdict. Unhappy? More like wild. Have you seen Jim Fisher come out? No, no, we, uh, we were looking for him. Boys, you're blocking the doorway, please. Spread out. Go on home. Go on about your business. I'm bringing Will Griner out here, and I don't want any fuss or disturbance. You understand? Please, folks, move on. Go ahead. Oh, Ben, I'd like to see you and Hoss over in my office in about ten minutes. And if you see Jim Fisher, bring him along, will you? I'll right, go we'll see if we can find him. Excuse me, people. Why don't you boys check in the silver dollar? Right, Tom. There he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. Murder! You murder! Murder! Please, yeah. we can't have that. Over here. Step this way, please. What for? I'm going to put you in protective custody. Oh, wait, yeah. wait, wait. You can't put me in any cell. Come on, you have no right. That's where you're wrong, Mr. Griner. I can and I will lock you. Roy, do you know what the blazes you're doing? Yes. I'm putting your client in protective custody. All right, you're the lawyer. Speak up. Tell this old fool what he can and Lord, can't I'm do. I'm going to have to remind you that my client has been tried by the court and acquitted, and here's an order, Satan. You're releasing. But the circumstances... You heard him. Now, give me my gun and let me get out of here. Greiner, I'm doing you a favor by holding you in protective custody. Now you heard that crowd outside. Forget the crowd. Oh, I can take care of myself. Boy, my client appreciates your offer. But he prefers to go home. Not yet. Come on. Roy, you're buying more trouble than you can handle. Do you know what you're doing? I think I know what I'm doing. I'll thank you for this. I'll see that you get thrown out of office. You get back to that judge, you get a writ, you get something, but you get me out of here. Now! came straight over here as soon as the judge turned us loose. Well, well, well. Good old George. Afternoon, stud. Well, I'm real glad to see you got the place open up again. That's what we all got to do. Pick right up where we left off. Business as usual. I just wanted to be sure you didn't have no hard feelings. Get out, George. Now, look, John. You think it was easy? There wasn't one of us on that jury that liked it. But there was nothing else we could do. Get out now. All right, if you're going to act that way. You too, start out. I thought I might go out. No, you can earn your beer money somewhere else now. Get out. (laughs) 
Well, looky here. Hey, Stat, look here what I found. <laughs> now, I was only doing my duty. You ain't never gonna see me in your barber shop ever again. Come me on. and a lot of other people. Run. We'll cut our hair with sheep shears. Run, you yellow dog, run! You Don't make me go get a writ. It's just gonna make you look bad. Never mind how it makes him look. Get it. You gotta release him. Harry, I've asked these men to come over and see me. I want to talk to them privately. Please sit down, gentlemen. If it concerns my client, Roy, I'm gonna have to stick around and listen. I guess that's all right. Ben, at any time before or during the trial, did anyone try to get either of you to change your testimony? Not me. No, not me. Tig, they're trying to frame me. You let them and I'll have your hide on the barn door. No. Um. If there was some hint that you could remember, some suggestion that maybe didn't seem important at the time, I could charge Griner and continue to hold him. Well, Roy, our uh, testimony concerned that uh, fist fight two days before the murder. Yeah. Roy, I'm going to have to protest. You've got no grounds for any of this. I say I do. Jim Fisher told one story in this office. He told another in court. Charlie Tettinger, key witness, never even went to court. Now, somebody got to them for sure, and you oh, know I've it. I've been patient with you. Now, you're going to make me go get that writ, or you're going to release him? I think Reiner should stay in protective custody. Well, you know, there may be trouble. Well, ben, the man is being detained illegally. He wants to go home. You can't hold him here. All right. You can take him. But if anything happens to him, it's going to be on your head and not mine. Ordinarily, I'd go after Jim and Charlie and shake the truth out of them, but my deputy's in Sacramento, and I just can't leave town the way things are. Why, some of those people, there's no telling what they'll do. I tell you, what worries me is Johnny Deegan. Me too, Ben. See, isn't he a, a kind of a friend of yours? Good friend. Well, then you better get to him and talk to him, and maybe you can stop trouble before it starts. Everything's going to be all right, Louise. Oh, oh, Ben, I'm frightened. He's going to do something dreadful. I know it. Is Johnny in there? He must be. I've looked everywhere else. I've got to talk to him. Uh, Louise, why don't you go on home? I'll talk to Johnny and send him over here. Oh, ben, I'm worried. Come on, I'll, I'll walk you. Go ahead. Everything's going to be all right. It's a promise. Ben. Go away, Ben. You open up this door, I'll kick it in. Are you going to kill Griner? Well, I've been studying on it. I think that's what I've got to do. I think you'll find this is all in order. I can see it in the edge of town. No need. Griner, you've been acquitted. It ain't gonna hurt you now to tell the truth. Now, don't you say nothing. 
You did a good job, Counselor. Send me the bill. I will, Griner. And it's going to be a big one. Are you standing up for Will Griner? No, I'm not. I'm just trying to stop you from making a bad mistake. Oh, Ben, I can think for myself. Can you? Think about this. Griner will have men all around him. I suppose you did cut him down. The odds are they'd kill you. And even if they didn't, he'd still be charged with murder. And Griner just isn't worth it. No, but Frank was. We grew up together, Ben. He was the finest man I ever knew. Yes, he was. Yes. And he believed in law and order. He believed he could hang on to that quarter section even when Will Griner decided he wanted it. Now, that's what cost him his life. We don't know that Griner killed him. Oh, I do, Ben. The last thing that Frank ever said to me, you heard me say it in the court. If anything happens to me, look to Will Griner. What about Louise? Have you thought about her? I've got to do what I think is right. That trial was raw, Harry. You know that. Yeah, raw, but Harry found my client in. There'll be others. And they're going to be a lot harder to convince. Go fishing, Harry. Week, ten days, till the stink gets out of town. Well, Roy, unfortunately, like you, I got a living to make. Hey, here he comes, that old devil. Will you stand clear, Ben? Uh, John, the law isn't through with him yet. Give us a chance, will you? I think we can prove that he tampered with the witnesses. You go on about your own business. Now, John, if I have to, I'll knock you clear across this room. And we're going to fight about it. Hey, dang it! Well, all right. You two try to get me hanged. You'll find I'm not the forgiven sort. The both of you. I give the law another chance. I'll wait. Thank you. But not for long, Ben. Tettinger place, don't you? Yeah, it's pretty far out, but I think we can find it all right. Well, if he's not there, you find out where he is or what happened to him. But stick with it. Will do. Well, if he don't want to come back with it. Egypt or Sabrina, you bring him back whether he wants to come or not. All right. Well, let's see if we can find Jim Fisher. Where do we start? Let's start with the stage office. You heard me calling to you, pounding on the door. Yes. I was half beside myself, John. You, you must have known that. I suppose. But you shut me out. Why? I'm sorry, Louise. Believe me. John, I want to know why. I apologize. Can't we leave it at that? You can shut me out right here. Just as surely as closing a door in my face. It's the only part of your life I'm supposed to share. The parties, the picnics, the frivolities. That is not my idea of a marriage to you, John. Mine either. Well, is there some dark side of you you don't want me to see? Were you enjoying the notion of killing Griner? No. It's just I was thinking all through the trial. What if they let him go? And they did. If I didn't speak to you, Louise, I suppose it's because I was afraid. Of what? That you'll make me turn from my duty. What duty? To Frank. To Frank? Oh, John. 
Frank was a sweet, wonderful man. Beyond respecting his memory, you have no other duty to him. I do. You did. Or maybe you thought you did. Ben Cartwright and the law will take care of Will Griner properly. Now that's that. You mean that you were worried that I could talk you out of something as important as that? Mm hmm. All this time, and I had no idea of my power over you. <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. Fair warning, the man. After I have you safely married, I'm going to make you jump. Oh, no hoops. <laughs> place are real shambles, clothes and gear scattered over every place. Looks like Mr. Fisher was in a hurry to leave. Yeah. Found the Liberty Stable. Listen, I ain't got time to gab right now like you, you see. I'm getting ready to go. This isn't a social call, Mr. Fisher. The sheriff would like to talk to you. No, no, like I said, I ain't got time. I gotta get out of here. Something about perjury. Four seventy, four eighty, four ninety, five hundred dollars. Well, I, uh, I found it. <laughs> Jim, there's very few men in this county that carry that kind of cash around. And if they lost it, I'd know it. I can't have that. Now, Will Griner, he's got this kind of money. He paid you, didn't he? No, 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 no you're, you're wrong. You're wrong. All right. Then I'll just keep the money and try to find the rightful owner. You can run along home. Oh, now, now, wait a minute, Sheriff. No, that's all right. Go ahead. Too bad you're going to miss that little trip you'd planned, though. Uh, Sheriff, Mr. Cartwright, they'll shut me off for good and all if I don't get out of here. Who will? Well, I, I can't tell you that, Sheriff. I dasn't. Now, look, level with me. I'll protect you, providing you tell the truth. Well, the other night, this, this fellow, he, he knocked on my window, you know. Who was it? Well, I couldn't see. It was dark, and that's the truth. Anyways, they, they told me I'd better change my story about, you know, seeing Griner on the road just before I found Frank Wheatner dead. They said if I didn't, they'd kill me. And if I did, they'd pay me $500. Now, oh, Roy, there's no identification there. You can't arrest Griner on that. Yeah, but th there's more. I, I told him I might be willing to deal, you know, if I could get a sign from the head man himself. And so the next day in court, well... Griner, he kind of nodded at me and, you know, held up his hand like this, you know what I mean? So I, I nodded back at him and... I just changed the part of my story to where I said I didn't recognize him on the road, but I did, and... It was Griner. Jim, it's one other thing. Huh? Who gave you the money? Will Griner. Griner? I, you turned him loose, he called my place and gave me the money. Roy, you're gonna arrest Griner, aren't you? Just as quick as I can get out there. Want me to help you? I sure do, Ben. If you get a horse to keep an eye on Jim here, I'd appreciate it to have you ride with me and back me up. Oh, Roy, there's one other thing. Griner will probably ask you to send for me. Well, this time you tell him to get another lawyer. <laughs> I'll get a horse. That'll be a pleasure. You want to do something? Yeah, sure. What you want to do? I don't know. Anything you want. We could have had a hanging. Right here in town, too. If there'd been any kind of a jury. Hey, you want to go over to the barber shop and hoorah old George Lassen some more? He closed up. He was some jury foreman. <laughs> He's probably hiding under the bed. <laughs> it was a shame about the hanging. Yeah. And Johnny Deegan. Counting on him taking a shot at Griner. Yeah, I wonder what got into him. 
I was counting on it. Everything's just kind of petered out. Hey. I know what we can do. Directly after it gets dark, we'll go over to old lady Kern's dress store. Bust in one of the windows. We can still do it. Makes it even better. Let's everybody know how we feel. Yeah. Cartwright, you never quit trying, do you? That won't do you any good, because I'll reach out and put my mark on you wherever you are. to perjury. Yes, it means... Well, I it don't means... understand what it means. And I understand it's not a hanging offense. No. Will Griner committed a hanging offense. Now we have the proof. Yes, I... I believe that there are procedures for uh, getting a new trial sometimes. Let's do that. Well, it's not that easy, and it takes time. And uh, in the end, the whole case would depend on a man who has already proven that he's capable of lying under oath and any... Half-decent defense attorney would tear him apart. I, uh, I don't think we could get a conviction. What's the penalty for this subornation thing? About five years. Oh, that's wonderful. Just dandy. Well, I... I know you're disappointed. You've done everything you could, Ben, and I appreciate that. Well, I think it's the best we could do under the circumstances. Well, I, uh... I best be getting along. No. Good night, Ben. Good night, John. We'll hang, we'll grind it from a sour apple tree. We will hang, we'll grind it from a sour apple tree. We will hang, we'll grind it from a sour apple tree. And he won't go for dinner. <laughs> we will hang, we'll grind it from a sour apple tree. We will hang, we'll grind it from a sour apple tree. We will hang, we'll grind it from a sour Let's break this thing up. Come on, Tim. Let's go. Up the saloon, up the silver dollar. Have fun. Let's break this thing up. John, I want to talk to you over my office. John. Well, am I under arrest? No. I've got a pretty fair idea of who's responsible for that little prank, and I think you do, too. So if you just tell the boys to settle up with Mrs. Kern, I'll forget about it. Is that all you want with me? No, it isn't, John. You've got lynching in mind. Well, I expect that's a pretty common notion tonight. You've been speaking to him, Ben? No. 
He didn't have to. Because I know if there's any real trouble, you're going to be right in the middle of it. Maybe even start it. But the thing that worries me is that everybody knows how I feel about Will Griner, and that might just lead to a bad misunderstanding. Such as? Thinking that I might just put up a token fight if somebody tried to take him. But I'd shoot John. I'd shoot to kill anybody that tried to take a prisoner from me illegally. Is that all? You can just spread that word to anybody that thinks different, and including yourself. John. I hope you and me don't end up on the opposite sides of this. Well, now, that's up to you. We'll be on the side we've always been. The side of the law. The law isn't perfect, but where would we be without it? Ben, that only makes sense when it's just. Would there be any justice without it? John, go on home. Drop it. And that was going to be my advice to you. Ben. If it comes to the worst, I can depend on you, can I? Of course. When do you reckon little Joe and Candy will be back in town? As soon as they find Charlie Tettinger. Roy. Yeah. I think maybe I better hunt up Al Crane, see if we can round up some of the boys. Good idea. Tettinger! I found his horse. He's grazing out back. All this stuff's still in there. Well, looks like he ran into some kind of trouble along the way, and his horse came wandering back in here. Why don't we take him with us, see what we can find out? Yeah. Rain, your daughter ran over to my house, said you wanted to see me. Oh, yes, Bert. You know Ben Cart, right? Sure, sure Ben. Good to see you, Bert. Thank you. Ben here has some uh, disturbing news. I wanted you to hear it. The lynching talk, huh? I think it's just talk. What do you think? Well, I think there's every possibility of trouble. It's like choosing the lesser of two evils, Griner or a lynching. I, I'm sorry, bad joke. What did you want from us, Ben? Well, Bert, you're the captain of the volunteer brigade. You're chairman of the city fathers. There's 50 men right there. Round them up. Bring them down to the jail. And risk their necks for Will Griner? Well, with that many men, there wouldn't be much of a risk. Ben, can you guarantee that? Well, no, I can't guarantee Well, now, even if you couldn't, I don't think that my men would lift one finger to help Griner. Well, Griner has nothing to do with it. We're talking about a principal, not a man. As a matter of fact, um, the town will be better off without Griner. Well, be that as it may, the fact still remains. Do we want a lynching in Virginia City or don't we? And if we don't, we've got to do something about it. Ben's got a point there, Bert. We've got to uphold the law. One man's life? A guilty man at that? Against the lives of innocent townspeople? Now, look. If Griner is lynched, they won't be innocent. That's right. And if something does happen tonight, we'll throw the full weight of the community and the law against whoever does it. That's proper and it's sensible. But we can't go around carrying guns half of the night, worrying our wives. I'll go along with that. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Sir, I trouble you. Hey! Hey, Larry! <laughs> hey, Dave! Come out and meet your new client! Dave, yeah. here I am. Come on out here, T. We'll teach you what real law's like. Go on, get him, Pete. <laughs> Going out. This ought to get him out. Come on. Let's go get him. Yeah. Yeah. Get up. Get away from there. Pete. Get away from there. Come here. What's 
That's the idea. Don't you know this is private property? You're attempting to break and enter. I'm taking you in. Come on. Oh, no. Come on. Now, Roy, you quit. Uh, what are you thinking on him for, Roy? Now, you shut up or I'll be taking you in, too. Oh, come on, Roy. We just have a little fun. That's yeah. the idea. Oh, hey, what is it? Teague's window. Yeah. <laughs> Why, the grand? I don't think the sheriff be bothering us too much anymore, either. Do you boys know that Griner's not going to get more than five years in prison? No. But it's a fact. Well, that ain't fair. That ain't fair at all. I mean, you see, he gets hanged. boy, John. But with him in jail, I'm going to need all the help I can get. Are you game, boys? Sure. We'll get you all the help you need. You yeah. got it, John. I but do it quietly. Bring them down to the store. I'll be waiting there. Can you spare me a minute, Johnny? Louise. What are you doing out so late? Is killing Will Griner going to bring Frank back? No, of course not. Then all you're doing is satisfying your own idea of revenge. No, I am not a vengeful man. What do you call it? Justice. Having a sense of what's right and wrong and living by it. I'm not going to argue with you, Louise. This doesn't concern you. Do you know that there are men in this town, respectable men, willing to stand by and let you do their dirty work for them? And, Johnny, when it's over, they'll punish you. All self-righteous and indignant. No. They are using you. You'll be destroyed. That does concern me. Ben Cartwright told you this. Yes, he did. But it can't be helped. Oh, Johnny. In Mercy's name, we've been planning a future together. What happens to that? Please, think. Be practical. I am being practical. Will Griner's beaten one trial already. It's likely he'll beat another. How can I show my face around this town with him running free? Then we will move. I'll go anywhere with you. Please. Please. It's all right, boys. Come on in. The lady's just leaving. help to you. But I'm going to have to deputize you, too. So if you raise your right hand, please, you solemnly swear to enforce and uphold the laws of the state of Nevada to the best of your ability, so I'll help you, God. I do. I do. You deputize. All right. Turn me loose. Let me make a run for it. Not your life. Listen, if they bust in here, make sure they get the right man. I mean, I hear Terrell of them making mistakes and getting the wrong man. Mr. Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright, you need to take care of Mr. Cartwright. 
a lot of excitement out there. Maybe it's been enough to satisfy them. Maybe it's all over, huh? Maybe. Do you have any luck with Al Crane? No. I don't think we're going to get any help from them. All right, John. The rest of them are gathering outside. Well, that ought to be more than enough. All right, boys, listen to me. Listen. What we're going to do is only common justice. Will Greiner shot and killed an unarmed man because he wanted that man's land and water. And then he bribed the witnesses to get himself an acquittal. Well, Greiner has got to pay for that at the end of a rope tonight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 All right, all right, now. Right. There may be a little trouble at the jail. Well, the sheriff's taken care of. Well, that might help. And I'll surely try to get us in without any trouble. But it's almost sure to be some sort of difficulty after it's all over. So I want us all to pledge your solemn word that we'll stick together and see this through right to the end. You get it. Now, now listen. After we've gotten Griner out, nobody is to torment him. Beyond tying him up, you're not to raise a hand to him. We've got a wagon. We'll take him down to the freight depot. There's a hoist. We'll hang him there. Agreed? Right. Let's get on with it. talk to you. That's a good idea. We've come to get Will Griner. I'm only asking you to stand out of the way. 
so that we can take him quietly. You know, I can't do that. I know there's just you and Hoss, so we'll get him. The only question is, must we spill blood to do it? Now, listen to me, John. No, 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 no. I've heard enough of talk and threats and arguing. We've been friends for a long time. And we can still be if you'll just get out of our way. Can you shoot me? Because that's what it'll come down to if you try to come in here. I've already put aside everything that matters to me. I'll not let anything stand in my way. I'll be coming first, right in front. Can you kill me? Study on it, Ben. Most of those fellows out there are friends of yours. I've been thinking on that. You're going to have to decide what to do. I can't ask you to shoot. You don't have to. Let's go. Yeah! yeah. Next one is coming right at you. Dr. Hoss. Yeah, right away, Paul. Sorry, I didn't want to shoot. I didn't want to reach us. That changes nothing. We'll get him another time. We found Tettinger. Shot in the back. Tettinger was a friend of mine. Jim, that's why we're asking to help us. You were both witnesses. You both saw Griner right after Wheatley's death. Well, I know, all I know is they... They told Tettinger and me if we didn't take the money, they'd kill us. So I took it. He didn't, and he's dead. That had to be one of Griner's gun hands. But they'll peach on each other, and I'll find out from them which one it was. Now, you can depend on that. What'll happen to Will Griner? I don't believe he'll hang, but I can guarantee you that he'll spend the rest of his life in prison.
You can go, Jim. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Mr. Conway? I'm a little amused at my own virtue. I found this in the street. You happen to know any careless girls with uh, skinny fingers? Well, now, Candy, I just might. Ben, I don't suppose we can put all the pieces together. No, I suppose not. Maybe some of them. Why don't you start by uh, putting this one where it belongs? Roy? Thank you, boy. Let's go. 